So we have some really sad news to bring you this morning. An incoming Republican member of Congress, Luke Letlow, has died of coronavirus. Um, only 41 years old. He's survived by his wife, two little kids, three years old and 11 months old. I mean, what a tragic story. And I mean, of course, Rachel, just a microcosm of the tragedies that have been unfolding by the thousands across this country every single day. And we are still in the worst of it. Yeah, really, really sad story. Luke Letlow, well known around Washington, D.C., is a former Republican Senate staffer. And, you know, our hearts go out to his family. You can't even imagine what he, his family is dealing with. And to your point, thousands across America. And it just, you know, COVID is still a very real disease. I think we're learning more about it every day, but it's still something we didn't know about a year ago. Uh, and so I think this just goes to show that hopefully, you know, this year will end and we will get through this and these kind of stories will diminish. Yeah, but this is, I mean, this just shows again, underscores for one more time that this is something to be taken incredibly seriously. I mean, we had, I'm just looking at the numbers now, 200,000 new cases yesterday, 3,628 deaths. And yes, we can throw this up on the screen from Bloomberg. Yes, the vaccinations are starting to go out, more than 5.1 million shots given. You may say, okay, well, that sounds pretty good, like we're headed in the right direction. But actually, we are way behind the schedule that the administration had originally laid out, they were planning on having 20 million vaccinations administered by the end of the year. I don't have to tell you the end of the year is just a few days away. Um, CNN actually had an expert on yesterday to lay out the math of, OK, if we continue at this pace, how long is it ultimately going to take us to get to herd immunity? Let's take a listen to what she had to say. The speed, 2 million in two weeks sounds really impressive, but I did some back of the envelope cal cal calculations here. And at that rate for a two dose vaccine, for us to reach 80% herd immunity in the US through vaccination, it will take us 10 years at a rate of a million vaccines a week. Or put in a different way, if we want to get there within six months, we need to be doing three and a half million vaccinations a day, wow. not a million a week. So, Rachel, we've all kind of gotten into our heads, at least I know I personally have, like, OK, by the spring, certainly by the summer, things will be back to normal. We'll be able to go out. We'll be able to gather. We'll be able to travel. All these things that we've put on hold for so long. I think we really need to roll back those expectations, because if there's one thing we've seen in 2020, it's been a failure time and time and time again of every institution in every possible way. I mean, yesterday I was remembering back to the beginning of this with the test debacle. It took the CDC 46 days to get a working coronavirus test, whereas in Thailand they had it in hours. So now if with this pace, and with governors, Ryan Grimm is pointing out that, you know, governors are being way too cautious about who they give this out to. And he says way too precious. We can throw his tweet up on the screen. You can see the divergence between what states have actually received. So California, for example, has received 1.7 million doses. They've only administered 300,000. Like, what are you waiting for? Texas, 1.2 million, only administered 146,000. My suspicion is they're really nervous about having like bad news stories about rich people jumping in the front of the line and things like that. But we got to get on this thing. What is going on? Yeah, this is where the governors really need to meet the federal government halfway. You know, Operation Warp Speed was a triumph, I think, for the federal government in getting not just one, but two vaccines developed and through the approval process. The government paid is or will pay for every single vaccine for most of hopefully everyone, but I think definitely for the vulnerable populations. They've given states, I think around $11 million already to start this effort, but the governors ultimately are the ones I think controlling the distribution. And I think the point that Ryan made is important. You have to get it to these vulnerable, vulnerable populations, excuse me, because what we know about COVID is who it affects the most, right? And who it affects quickly. And that is, again, the elderly and certain people with underlying conditions start there. 
And, you know, yeah, you don't want rich people jumping the line. So take measures to make sure that doesn't happen. But get this in place now and do it quickly. Now, you've seen some state governors come out. I think the governor of Pennsylvania testified in the Senate this week and said, look, we need eight billion dollars to make this happen. Um, And maybe that's a case, you know, for the next administration uh, to make to Congress. But in the meantime, start with what you have. The federal government's given the states over seven hundred billion dollars, not just for vaccine development, but for everything else try and prioritize getting this vaccine out because this ultimately is what's going to end the pandemic. Yeah, there should be no greater priority right now than getting this vaccine out as quickly as possible. And so when I looked at these numbers, I mean, I I guess I shouldn't have been shocked because we have failed every step of the way in dealing with this thing. But I really was kind of shocked. Um, I've been engaging and I guess some wishful thinking that this one thing may actually ultimately go smoothly. But, you know, it's just sad to me, Rachel, because it really feels like our country, after 40 years of neoliberal ideology and like shifting everything off to the private sector and denigrating government, starting with Ronald Reagan all the way through the pres to through the present and stripping the power, stripping the expertise, stripping like the belief that the federal government can actually do anything. It just seems like we fall on our face every time we try. I Yes, I think I agree with that, but I think warp speed proved a little bit otherwise, right? Like we, the government moved, and we've talked about it on this show, the government moved incredible barriers that existed to vaccine development, and we got it in under a year. Yeah. I don't want to undervalue that, but I think it is frustrating, right? It is frustrating that we are now, we have the tools we need to get people back to some semblance of normality, to get immunity into the population, and we're struggling. And so you have to hope, right, that at some point we are able to look back and say what went wrong and actually have an honest conversation about the fact you know, that we failed on certain areas and how we fix that. It's Washington, so probably not. But one has to hope that we will do that. Yeah, I just hope that, you know, this pace speeds up dramatically because otherwise it's going to be years before we get this thing under control. Um, Rachel, stick with us and you all, too, because we've got more rising for you after this.